reported to the uh okay hello hello i'm so glad that you guys are here today uh for our webinar series uh each webinar will be its own thing that we do and today the focus is really going to be on creating classes and how to go about doing that uh and i think you've probably heard me say before that there isn't only one way to create a class but there is a way to perform a technique and and that's actually a bit i got from leslie kamenoff in one of the yoga anatomy workshops is is if we have a certain way or style of doing something in mind, then we would want to follow a, maybe a proven path or a path that complements other layers of this training. And this training is a very, very simple thing to follow along, but you're going to want to make sure uh, that you, that you kind of just just stay within these key benchmarks that I'm offering you. So the one thing I always ask everybody is just during training, once you graduate, you can teach anything you want, but during training, please only use things inside the workbook. So, or the Yoga and Daddy B book. And the reason for this is when you guys get together in different scenarios, whether it's a webinar or it's neighbor settlement or it's on a day retreat or it's in Costa Rica or Portugal, whatever, whatever it is, we're, we're all kind of speaking the same language with one another uh, and it helps with continuity of time. So I know you, you know, you, you, you parted with some of your time today. Thank you for that on this beautiful sunny day or on this webinar. And, and I got to say, Say that I appreciate that. And so to help make sure that we have best use of time, let's just stick with sharing asana that's in the workbook. So the workbook is basically broken down into the three the three different categories. And this doesn't matter if you're in the 200, the 300, the prenatal, any which way about it, we're still using that that main workbook because warrior one remains warrior one. Prenatal warrior one becomes a different thing with different modifications, cues and qualities, but it's still a warrior one. So because of that, I wrote the workbook in three sections. The first section is yoga snippets. And this is just simply three postures put together for you, done for you programming. And then from there, you can choose which ones you want. You, you know, put this one in, take that one out, so on. The second part of the workbook is the yoga asana a yoga asana handbook. And this is where we kind of unpack the individual asana and offer the cues, the qualities, modifications, benefits, entertaining fun facts about it. And then the third part of the of the workbook is, well, the workbook. And in order to graduate, you just need to fill out the workbook. I don't want you to stress out about that because the answers to the workbook are at the end of the lesson. So after you go through all of this, if you want to check your work or if you want to see if your North Star is anywhere near what I might consider a North Star, you could do that. The answers are there. So it's not about can you go hunt in find data. I mean, you can get that on Google. It's really more here. Here's the information. Now, whenever we're together, let's practice this information together. And the key idea behind it is that each one of us have a chance to see it for the first time or become more familiar uh, with it as time goes on. Uh, move towards mastery is the goal of this program. So by the time you're done and you graduate, that you feel that you have mastery over this information. Since there's 80,000 documented yoga asana, um, we're probably not going to cover all of those. So these are the ones I picked. They're as good as any, and you can always build on those later. Uh, so I hope that that kind of helps, helps provide a guideline to you. When we then get into the workbook of filling out the questions, I believe it's on page 115, we start actually making our own snippets. So going from three postures to four postures, where you take three postures and you could take them right from yoga snippets if you want, um, or any, any of the postures that are in the workbook and, and make it four. So the key thing about this, the craft behind it, and if you take notes, this is a good note to take, uh, is that we want to categorize the um, the the yoga create a class each template into the following categories. And you know, you could write this down: um, standing, 
So four standing poses. Seated, or four seated poses. Kneeling, four kneeling poses. Supine, which is face up. So four face up poses. And prone, face down. And that's it. It Those coincide with the Yoga Anatomy book, but at the very back, you can see they're sorted in this way. That was my inspiration for this idea. So thank you, Leslie Kamenov. That's a great way to organize data. Uh, but he also, add, he and Matt, Amy Matthews add arm balances, which I don't add because I don't know that for arm balances together is um, a great idea. You know, that maybe that's more uh, something that we add in between creative class snippets that we create. So your call to action is to create these snippets of four postures. One benefit of doing that is this week we have a, say, a, sand, a standing snippet that we create and we'll create one together today. And then next week we go to teach that and that's fun. And we teach it again the following week. And then we're ready to mix it up and maybe add something new. You could take that standing snippet away and put a different standing snippet in. And you don't have to rewrite uh, the, the entire class week after week. Um, and I hope that you really uh, take advantage of this information because I've been doing this for about 15 years and I can't tell you how many teachers have had to let their classes go as much as they love them, just as much time as it takes putting together sequencing, choosing music, getting ready, getting in the car, driving, showing up, being early, teaching the class, saying goodbye to everybody, close up, go home. You know, it's really more than an hour. So, you know, for many, many people, we have competing commitments such as kids, family, what at work, whatever you do, uh, I need my sleep, you know, I, I need to make sure that I get enough rest. So whatever it is you need to make sure that you get by following this particular technique of creating a class, it really serves you on a multiple of layers. Another way it's going to serve you is when we're together in a lab setting and whether that be on a webinar setting where, you know, this part is recorded and, you know, maybe, maybe then the recording is shut off and we, we can work uh, together loosely without you being worried about like you being recorded while doing, while doing yoga asana, but being able to dry run them, try them out, refine, refine them, go home, practice them, teach to anybody that will let you teach them, your dog, whatever you got, you know, and your cell phone, whatever, what, whoever it is that will allow you to teach them, uh, just earning, earning that time. And you do earn hours doing that and that mastery through repetition, and then when we come back and we meet again, let's say for lab, even at a different location, maybe we're at Batavia now instead of neighbor settlement, you know, and then now you have something that you can practice that I can pair you guys off in partners like, okay, you two can work together and you four can work together. And the way I do that is each one of you have already seen this information because you all have the same workbook. Or if it's your very first day, you're being introduced to information that you'll be seeing, uh, you know, through the course of this program. Or if you're about to wrap up, maybe you've really picked up some really um, smooth transitions, some interesting language that you you might like, some sequencing that's just the bomb and everyone's speaking the same language. And you guys can share this with each other. So, you know, that's the hope that you guys teach one another. And that is 25% of the syllabus. So... Reasons 25% of the syllabus is because we can talk in theory about what it might be like to teach a good yoga class, but that never translates into experience prior to actually teaching a yoga class. So I hope that that kind of uh, provides a nice umbrella. As far as making sure that this is a mentorship where you're working closely with me, we do have our online portal at michelleraysobe.com. I want you to consider that as maybe our online library. So if you were at college and you took a class, your teacher might send you to the library and get a couple of books. You're not expected to know all of it. So I have many programs there. And if you want to take them all, great. If you don't, that's fine. But there's there's 
uh, evergreen, timeless information that you can use there that also falls in line with some continuity of the rest of this training. So again, it's not the first time that you see some of these things because we've captured them via Zoom and we've published them there. And so for that reason, I'm not going to have every bit of every webinar uh, recorded because it's just a little bit more relaxed not doing that. But certain key points that I repeat a lot and I repeat this spiel a lot, I'm going to go ahead and record for this time before I turn that off. Um, so if you want to pop any questions into the chat, I am going to stop this recording now. And then we'll chit chat about that.